Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to your channeled message reading. This is the Dream Clairvoyant. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I do hope you're doing well. So I really want this channeled message reading um, to be about the twin flame journey, okay, between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. I haven't done a twin flame reading in a while. I'm also going to be posting individual messages for the divine masculine um, and then a, a separate message for the divine feminine. So please stay tuned for that. For those of you who believe that you're in a twin flame connection, I do ask that you only take what resonates, leave what does not. Don't force anything to resonate if it doesn't. You're always welcome to check out my other readings here on my channel. Also remember that the cards really represents energies that any gender can embody. Um, so let's get started. What's going on in this twin flame connection? What's going on in the twin flame connection? What's going on in this twin flame connection? What is going on in this twin flame connection between the divine masculine and divine feminine? going on in this twin flame connection Ooh, bear with me you guys it's taking some time the message might be just very specific let me see what's going on in this twin flame connection Okay, so we have the moon paired with the two of wands. Hmm. Tell us more about the moon and the two of wands. So the moon talks about secrets, something that's hidden or something that you're just not seeing. It could also talk about deception, illusions, the spirit realm. Then you have the two of wands. The two of wands is someone who's trying to get a sense of direction, okay? Tell us more. The devil. Hmm. I feel like someone is, um, I feel like someone has been under, under an, in, under an influence and Lord, I hope this reading, I hope only the right people, let me just say this, I hope only the right people will watch this reading because believe it or not, there are people who watch tarot readings for all the wrong reasons. They want to be 10 steps ahead. They want to see if their magic, manipulation, spell work, charms are, are working. You know, they want to look into people's fortune. But this is someone here. I trust that this is going to land in, in the hands of the right person. But this is someone who um, has been under an influence. And I felt it when the devil card came out. It just confirmed it. This is someone who's been under some form of uh, manipulation. I wouldn't be shocked if it's spell work. And it's made them very hard with the two of wands. It has made it very hard for this person to get a clear sense of direction when it comes to what their decisions, which decisions they should make, their choices, which path they should take. Someone has been completely consumed by a negative influence here. They have been completely controlled by the devil. I'm going to be very honest. They have no sense of clear direction. And the devil is an influencer. The devil, you know, it's all about being tempted by the material world, having obsessions, addictions, possessiveness, control issues, just pure toxicity. It is a low vibration. And I feel like whoever this person is, they've made really bad choices because of this negative influence over them. They've chosen the material world. They've chosen sex, addictions, money, greed, lust. They've chosen, um, um, you know, probably even to do like wicked things out of jealousy, you know, envy. I mean, this is just a low vibrational energy that has consumed someone. And... On the back of the deck, you have the uh, the Four of Swords. So the Four of Swords talks about contemplation. You know, it's really 
being called to put something to rest because you've been so or they've whoever this person is whether it's you or someone you're connected to they've been so exhausted by their own thoughts you know i i kind of feel like this is someone who's not able to make their own decisions they're the the decision the decisions are being made for them whoever this dark influence that's over this person it has been influencing their decision it's like someone here is not able to process their thoughts so they just make sort of like impulsive decisions what they don't understand is this is not them these decisions that they're making it does not represent their character and their integrity this is someone who i feel is under spell work tell us more please I felt it strongly when I looked at the two of wands. I felt it strongly. Someone here is not able to process their thoughts. Someone is not like awake. They're not all the way there. It's almost like they're, they are a robot. Again, two of swords. It's almost like they are a robot or something. Like they're not rationalizing their actions they're not reasoning they're not reasoning you know there's a cause and effect for everything but this is someone who's just doing things without really thinking i don't know how else to um explain it but i do pray that this person receives you know deliverance from the most high the two of swords the two of swords talks about this person's under an illusion they're under some sort of spell work um the two of swords is like not seeing things clearly not knowing which direction to go like should i go to the right should i go to the left you know where should i head two of swords is when you're when you're on the fence when you're at crossroads they're not able to see things clearly to know which direction to go it's like it's like the blind leading the blind sort of Their vision is corrupt. Their perspective has been manipulated, completely corrupted. So how are they supposed to, if they can't, if you can't see things clearly, you will, you will have a hard time making good decisions. Like this person is blind. They cannot see things clearly here. And the six of cups, I feel like they're about to do something. The six of cups represents, um, cases like this is just very sad um but things like this things like this happen you know spells charms and stuff there are people who who practice practice dark forms of spirituality there's the dark and there's the light the six of cups is all about the past reminiscing about the past wanting to reconcile reunite with the past the page of wands, pages represents communication, a message, the relaying of information. Typically, the page of wands is good communication that's going to make you happy, that's going to make you optimistic, but clarify the six of cups and the page of wands. Strength is all about overcoming difficulties, overcoming the fears, the doubts, the insecurities. Clarify the Six of Cups and the Page of Wands. I feel like they want to do something. This person gets haunted, haunted thoughts. This person is under spell work. And
The reason why I keep on saying they're under spell work is because what I'm seeing about this person is they, they're tormented. Like I feel like this is someone who hears voices, but they confuse it to be, they think that it's their inner voice. It's not their inner voice. I don't know if this person has been wired and when I say wired, I'm talking like there's some sort of um, someone is controlling this individual through spiritual work, dark, dark spiritual work. So I don't know if they've been wired to reject another person. They've been wired to hate someone, to be, dis you know, to not be interested in someone. But there's this fear. They get these thoughts and it's not their it's not their own thoughts. It's not their inner voice. This person is under heavy spiritual attack and they're <clears throat> they're heavy. They're hearing. <clears throat> Hold on. Oh, Lord, mm -mm. I'm going to talk. I will talk choking or not. I'm going to talk because I know what's going on here. There's thoughts that this person hears. I actually feel like it's evil spirits that's talking to this individual. And, and these evil spirits are putting just fears and doubts in their mind to uh, traumatize them from doing what their heart wants them to, to do. Spiritual manipulation has no effects on the heart. It's all about the mind. Spiritual manipulation it affects the mind, not the heart. That's why many times I see situations where someone's been put under spell work to be in a relationship with an evil person and they have no love for that person, but their mind has been so skewed and wired to convince themselves that they should be with this person even though there's no real love, even though there's no real passion. Their mind has been manipulated to and and they've been convinced through their manipulated mind they've been convinced that even though they don't love this person that they should still stay they've been manipulated to believe that what they feel is love when it is not spell work the heart let me tell you love is the most powerful force in the of, in the universe the most powerful nothing can overcome love the heart <laughs> when you love someone, I don't care what, and this may be a situation where this person is in love with another person, whatever spell work, whatever charm, it will not make that person love you. That's why I'm so disgusted by people who are so desperate, so desperate to get someone to be with you that you would go to the far extent go beneath the ground to try to to try to steal someone's free will and force them to be with you and may the ultimate the ultimate judgment of God be placed on you I don't stand for that a true spiritualist will never condone that never it is, an, it is an evil, wicked deed. You're trying to play God in someone's life because everyone has their ordained life partner. Everyone has their, their destiny, their purpose, their life path. And, and you think you can just come in and force yourself in someone's life. I will never stand for that. And if I have anyone on my channel who is doing this, get off it. And I, I pray that you will feel the wrath of God. And I pray that you will get the ultimate exposure and be disgraced and humiliated. You demon. I am tired of stories like this. I am disturbed in my spirit. This is demonic. And you will have to give an answer to God. And for my people who have experienced this, for my good people who have experienced this, where you know you have a soulmate, 
who's under spell work or even yourself. Let me find out someone's doing spell work to my subscribers. It's on. Because I will make sure to wake them up. Hang in there, you guys. Hang in there. Do your prayers. Do your meditations. I always tell you guys, the key to spiritual warfare is prayer and fasting. If your body allows it, take a day. Take a day to fast. There's different types of fasts out there. Take a day to fast. It makes a big, big difference. Anyways, I had to get that out. I'm so angry right now at what I'm seeing. This is someone who gets these thoughts in their head. This is someone who is completely <laughs> under, under a very dark influence and it influences their decisions. It influences their, percep their uh, perception of things. This is someone where I feel like they get these haunting, tormenting thoughts of doubts. They hear voices of doubts. And so they never feel good enough to take that leap of faith forward and to follow their heart. It's like this voice is telling them not to do what their heart is telling them to do. This may be someone who always looks nonchalant. But that's not their true character. This is someone who I feel has been beaten and bruised up to the core. So they're so insecure. They don't talk the way they want to talk. They don't express themselves the way they want to express themselves. It's almost like they're not even there because this is someone whose spirit, their spirit is being oppressed. It's almost like they're just there. And many times you can tell that someone's under heavy, heavy spell work. Look at their eyes. Their eyes look dead. Look at their eyes. Look at around their eyes. It looks like their whole soul has been sucked out. Because they're not awake. They're not spiritually awake. Someone is tampering with their spirit. And every time this person's heart, spell work has no influence over the heart. The heart wants what it wants. Every time this person's heart tells them to take a leap of faith forward towards something or someone, those voices of doubts. This may have been someone who's been wired, spiritually wired, to not get involved with another person. They may, whoever put this spell work on them, may have done it in a way where they would only be interested in that person and that person only, and that they would not be interested in anyone else. There are sick, disgusting, demonic, filthy people who do stuff like that. They go to practitioners or they do it themselves. They travel across the world doing all sorts of disgusting, evil things. And God's watching you. You may be able to get away with it and do it in the dark when you go to another country, when you call up these practitioners. But honey, let me tell you, God sees everything and you will be held accountable for that. They go to these practitioners and they'll say, oh, I only want him to want me. I want him to, to want me and me only. Or I want her to want me and me only. Let them not be interested in anybody else. Weak losers. power That's what powerless people do. Because if you're really powerful, you would not have to use that kind of manipulation to get what you want. So this person has this like fear, this unconscious, uh, this unconscious fear of pursuing other people. 
because they were literally wired, like spiritually wired to not want other people, to not be interested in other people. But love overcomes it all. I feel like this is someone who really, really wants to reach out, but it's a risk because this person is under some sort of manipulation. So it's a risk. If they were to go towards another person, what would happen? That's my question because the strength is overcoming difficulties. The, the six of swords is moving things from rough waters to calmer waters. They want to communicate with someone. They want to reconnect with someone. Excuse me. They want to reconnect with someone. Look, the hangman on the back of the deck. The hangman is all about uh, letting go, release, surrendering. They want to take that leap of faith. Their heart is like, go, go, go. But their mind has been wired. So their mind may be, may be telling them all the reasons for them not to go. Tell us more about this Six of Cups. this the hermit the hermit talks about isolating healing recovery i feel like this is who they want to reconnect with they want to reconnect with someone who's in the hermit energy most likely someone who they hurt and backstabbed because the ten of swords is a betrayal they want to talk to someone who i feel they they could have attacked someone who they thought they were defending themselves from they may not even be able to reason with why they did that, why they attacked this person, why they betrayed this person. Like this is someone who just does things on impulse. They're not able to reason their actions, to rationalize their actions. But their mind has been manipulated and wired to believe that they did the right thing, but their heart is still calling out to, to this person. So it's like the mind, the mind is telling you to hate someone, but the heart is telling you to love them. This person is not in alignment with themselves because they're being manipulated. This person could be wondering, why do I hate this person so much? Why did I, why, why, why are my actions so hateful towards this person, but I still go back to them. I keep on spying on, on them. I keep on watching them. I love this person. I, I have feelings for them, but then my actions though, I do hateful, hurtful things to them. Why do I hate this person, but I love them at the same time? They're not able to rationalize their actions their feelings their thoughts they're like why why do i always like why can't i move on from this person yeah knight of wands the knight of wands this person uh knight of wands is someone who's very fiery passionate youthful you know, it, it's someone who can be flighty, though, like a lover that is fleeing. There's a lot of instability with the Knight of Wands. And that's because this person here, they're under this manipulation where I feel like they get the, these random, like, random jolts or uh, jolts of, like, um, passion. It's like one second they're angry at this person. The next second they're passionate and they want to go towards this individual. There's no instability here. If they were to go towards towards their person i feel like they would not be able to commit i feel like if they were to go to their person they would probably passionately pursue their person sleep with them but then like a couple days later they they're out and it's because this person is under manip <laughs> this person's under manipulation that's why they're so unstable so even if the two of them were to get together there would be no stability they would leave that person within a couple of days or even a couple of hours later. Because they're being tampered with, they're being manipulated. This is so frustrating.
Nine of Pentacles. Clarify the Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. Wow. Nine of Pentacles, this is all about success. Someone who's very successful, well accomplished, independent. They have nine out of ten Pentacles. But then you have the Ten of Pentacles that's here. What is this about? Because when you go from a nine to a Ten of Pentacles, that's you having, you know, the ultimate stability and security in your life, being very, very successful and abundant. Knight of Pentacles. I feel like this person wants I feel like this person wants to go from a nine of pentacles. This person may have even been like they may even feel like, oh no, I never want to be in a relationship. I just want to be independent. But it looks like this this individual is wanting to no longer because the nine of pentacles is being single, independent, successful. It looks like they want someone to to share, to share their their success with you know it looks like because a ten of pentacles it is uh generational wealth it's a family that's very successful and the knight of cups it's some it is someone who has a kind friendly and romantic gesture This is someone from the past. This is someone from the from the past that no no matter how burdensome the connection got, they never let go of this person who they're in love with. And they want to extend, they want to give an offer to make amends. Look, the 4 of pentacles is here. The 4 of pentacles is having this attachment holding something or someone close to your heart and not wanting to release it they believe temperance they believe that this person is like their other half a piece of them and i feel like this person feels very lost and empty incomplete without their true love the heart wants what it wants. The heart wants what it wants. Queen of Swords, clarify the Queen of Swords. Page of Cups. Clarify the Queen of Swords. Bear with me, you guys. Yeah. Who is this Queen of Swords? That was the death. Who is this Queen of Swords? Who 
Holy Spirit, who is this kind of swords? swords I know a wicked energy when I when I see one and when I sense one there's a queen of swords who's involved in this they could be Gemini Libra Aquarius they don't have to be they could simply be carrying the energy of the queen of swords because they are very intelligent the king and queen of swords are air signs and air signs are all about the brain the mind they are highly intelligent people you know the king and queen of swords are like professionals the lawyers the doctors the nurses right the teachers so unfortunately you know if you naturally carry the queen of uh, queen of swords energy do not be offended um i have heavy capricorn in my chart capricorns are represented by the devil I'm not going to take offense to that. I know I'm not the devil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just want to make that clear. Um, because there are people who have commented before. They're like, oh, you're always picking on air signs. You're always picking on air signs. I mean, if the shoe fits, if you know I'm not talking to you and you didn't do it, why are you so upset? But when a person is using their intelligence to be cunning, to get their way through through being deceitful, Many times they come out as the Queen of Swords because Queen of Swords, King of Swords are highly intelligent people. So they, whoever this Queen of Swords is, whoever this third person is in this situation, they could be an air sign or they're simply carrying the energy of the Queen of Swords because they're intelligent, but they do have the ability to lack empathy, to be very cold and cutting. This Queen of Swords here, when we clarified their energy, the Page of Cups came out. The Page of Cups is an admirer. But here's the thing, though. I don't even feel like that's what it's saying. Excuse me, you guys. I keep on burping because I've been drinking, but I've been drinking juice. Excuse me. Um, there's something really off about this Page of Cups, and I never... Look at me. I'm, like, clicking my nails. I'm so anxious. This energy has me anxious because there's something off. And I usually don't get this feeling with the Page of Cups. Page of Cups is messages, you know, of admiration. But there's more to this because the Seven of Pentacles is you reap what you sow. See how this gentleman, see the pentacles that are placed in, these, in the tree? He put it there. He strategically placed these pentacles there. That's why the Seven of Pentacles represents you reap what you sow. It's like when you intentionally do something persistently pursue something to get the exact outcome that you want this queen of swords this third energy in the situation regardless of their sign they could be an earth sign fire sign water sign but they're very intelligent and skills which is why they're embodying the queen of swords energy male or female right I feel like this is a kind of person who is very, first of all, very cunning. They know how to use tactics to get exactly what they want. But the Page of Cups, I don't know why, but this is kind of connecting to, I'm hearing the message uh, that I posted last week. And I was warning someone about, um, I was warning a male about taking drinks, food, food, drinks from, um, from a, a feminine energy that had heavy fire and air in her chart. I don't know if you guys remember that warning that I posted. It was a live uh, reading. It was a live stream. It, and I went on it and I was like, there's, I was seeing a feminine energy, a very karmic feminine energy who has heavy like fire and air in their charts. But 
they're the thing with this queen of swords the charms the spells that they use lies in the drinks the food the consumption of the food and drinks that they give to this masculine i'm picking up this energy again you guys you can't be eating from just anyone i can't remember the last time i ate from anyone except for my mom that's the num people people who are into dark forms of witchcraft voodoo juju hoodoo santeria whatever they call it they know how to do potions they know how to put stuff in people's food and in people's drink that's actually the first thing that many of them are taught to do people who dibble and dabble in dark forms of witchcraft they know everything about poisoning poisoning people putting stuff in people's food all that stuff Whether it's them getting leaves, spices, some even go to the far extent to get their bodily fluids and to put it in people's food and people's drinks. And that's all I can say because I don't want to disgust anyone. People who do things like this, one of their one of the first tricks that they learn is how to how to dibble and dabble in people's food. can't be eating from just anyone and many people say the way to a man's heart is food i know the way to my heart hey i'm not a man but the way to my heart is food i love food but you can't be eating from just anyone Whatever this person here, this third person, let me tell you, whatever it is, they could do charms, they could do spells, whatever. It lies in the food. It lies in the food. It lies in the drinks. And many times people who do stuff like this, you guys, <clears throat> people who do stuff like this, they put it in drinks that have a strong flavor so that you won't be able to taste it you won't be able to taste what it whatever it is that they put in your food so they'll cook something that has a strong flavor where you won't even taste it you don't even know that they put something in your food you're over there mm -hmm, yeah you eating it you don't even know what's in it they put it in drinks i know the warning that i gave last week what i saw about that karmic feminine energy was they were very much into like smoothies healthy drinks you see them with a bunch of like fruits and vegetables and stuff like that they make a lot of healthy so-called healthy drinks this may be someone who who says that they're into health or they're good at at making drinks and food that's that's the way that they go that's their method It's in the drink. It's in the drink. That's that's the key method that this person uses. And it's dangerous because once you consume it, I mean, it's already in your body. Hold on, I'm getting something. Ace of Swords, aren't, right? Y'all know me. When I see the Ace of Swords in my readings, it's a yes card. That's my confirmation that I am seeing and hearing the truth, that I'm hearing it and interpreting the message correctly. Ace of Swords, the helping hand of the Most High, bringing in the truth and clarity. 
And if you feel like you're a victim, if you, the viewer, you're watching this and you're like, mm, dream, this could be me. Stop eating from this person. Stop eating their meals. Stop, stop drinking whatever they give you. Stop taking gifts. Stop taking things from them. Go a good month without, without receiving anything from this person. And pay attention to how you start feeling about them. This person likes to give things to people. They even, they may be like a, 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 they like to gift people things. And that's my love language. When I love someone, I love getting them nice gifts. But it's not coming. This person gifting you things is not coming from a good place. They may even like to buy you expensive things or they're always, they're always giving you gifts. It's not coming from a genuine place. Because once you hold it, once you receive that gift, you don't know what you're accepting from them. Tangible things carry a spirit behind it. And, and that's why you can't be out here just accepting just anything from people. You guys, be careful. Because once you take it out of their hands, once you accept it, that means you're accepting what they're giving you even spiritually. That means you're inviting in what they're giving you. Things hold a special meaning behind it. Especially when the intent is bad. The Nine of Wands. Hold on. I was going to look up something. I was getting something. Please give me confirmation. I heard something. Holy Spirit, please give me confirmation. What was the first method that they were using? Seven of Wands. Ah, I knew it. You guys, this person, I feel like this is someone who... Um, is definitely, we already talked about, they're definitely into dark forms of witchcraft. Um, this is someone who I feel, whoever this person wants to go to, whoever they want to take, take a leap of faith to, a true love, a true friend, even their relative. Um, what I'm saying is there's someone who this person, this victim here, wants to go towards. It could be a lover, a friend, or even a family member who they feel so drawn to and their heart is telling them to go to. There is a third, there is a third, uh, a third party. This queen of swords is a third party, but whoever it is that this person wants to go towards, right? The true love, the true friend, the true family, take it how it resonates. That person has been protecting them for a very long time. Like the seven of wands is a defend yourself card. That true love, that true friend, that true family has been, I just heard through prayer. I heard through prayer very, very clearly just now. They have been protecting this person through prayer. And look right behind on the back of the deck was the three of cups. They have someone interceding for them, praying for them, and protecting them. Three of Cups. It could be a friend, a relative, a neighbor who knows what's going on. Take it how it resonates. But because that person, what I'm hearing is that true love, true friend, true family is an intercessor. So an intercessor is someone who intercedes on the behalf of people, especially through prayer. And that person, y'all, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps. Whoever, whoever this person's energy, I'm picking up on their energy. This intercessor is a powerful, I don't know if y'all can see, well, I'm pretty hairless. I have goosebumps. I don't know if you can see it. That person is a powerful intercessor 
and 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 through their prayer it has been blocking this this queen of swords charms spells spiritual manipulation it actually broke it it broke the hold that this queen of swords had on this person so as a last resort and i just heard she knows it this queen of swords knows it this queen of swords knows that there's someone who's interceding for this person so as a last resort what she did you want to know what she did that's when she she or he queen of swords could be a male take it how it resonates that's how she or he resorted to the drinks and the food this is some deep this person's into some deep 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 and dark witchcraft because they were tampering with this person's spirit but what i'm seeing is this true person here through through intercessory prayer protected this person's spirit so this queen of swords could not tamper with their spirit that's what it is when, when people do voodoo and charms and stuff on you it's your spirit it's not your physical body things take place in the spirit realm first before they take place in the physical realm This queen of swords had access to someone's spirit. This is this is some deep and spooky stuff. But please, this is educational. This, this will really protect someone. When someone does spiritual work on you, it's not your flesh and body. It's your spirit that they're trying to tamper with. It must take place. Their magic must take place in the spirit realm first before it takes place in the physical realm. That's just how life is. That's how life works. Everything that happens in the physical realm has already taken place in the spirit realm. And this is biblical. This is biblical. I know everyone has different religions, but I'm trying to tell you, it's not just coming from me. That's why I tell people all the time, it's a powerful thing to have a spiritual connection with the Most High. You can read about God, learn about God, but when you have a spiritual connection to God, you're able to get the keys. You have the keys to the streets. Let me tell you, you know how these things work. It's biblical, it's in the Bible. Everything that happens in the physical realm has already taken place in the spirit realm. So when you're spiritual, when you're really in tune and you do your prayers, your fasting, your, med your, your meditation, you're blocking things in the spirit realm from manifesting in the physical realm. That's how you protect yourself. That is how you protect yourself. And for many of you who you're like, dream, I've been under spiritual attack. Wake up, wake up at about three, three in the morning, three, uh, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., say a good prayer. Wake up, get down on your knees because between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m., that's when the dark world thrives. That's when you see these dark witches and warlocks and wizards and voodoo high priests and high priestess, they're up. When everyone is sleeping, they're up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. They're chanting, they're doing this, they're doing that. Because that's the hour where the spirit realm is thriving, specifically the dark world. Most of us are sleeping around that time, right? We're sleeping. And many times when, when we sleep, when you dream, you enter the spirit realm. That's why they that's why many people who are into into dark forms of witchcraft they do their practices between those hours 3 a.m. 4 a.m. because they know the world is sleeping. 
then those of us, those of us regular people, we wake up in the morning, we, we're back into the physical realm, we're going about our day, but you have no clue what took place, what happened to you in the spirit realm when you were sleeping. Sometimes you may even see it in a dream. Pay attention to your dreams. Things that happen in your dreams often manifest in real life. Because when you're in, in the dream state, you're actually tapping into the spirit realm, whether you know it or not. And for some of you who like to watch tarot readings, you like to watch my channel doing evil stuff to people, I know you're mad right now because I'm I'm exposing the tactics that you use on people. So when they're up at, at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. doing God knows what to you and you wake up around that time, you get on your knees and you say a powerful prayer. It, 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 it counters what they're doing to you between those hours because they're up. These people are up. They're chanting. They're doing their stuff, their sacrifices, rituals. You get up. You say that powerful prayer. It backfires. It throws it right back at them. And it cannot manifest in the physical and harm you. Say your prayers. Not just at nighttime. You can be driving and say, say a quick prayer. You can be at work. Say a quick prayer. This is someone who they know that this person had an intercessor. They know, my hair went on the table. They know this person has an intercessor. So what they did is, because I feel like this person had access to this individual spirit. This queen of swords had access to this man's spirit. I don't know if it's, oh, I just took my hair. That could have been a sign. I don't know if this is someone who took this person's hair, their, their physical belonging, like their clothes, their shoe especially their, their hair. They could have taken this man's hair or this woman's hair. And my hair, I had a string of hair just right now. And it gave them, because the hair, right? When, when people, that's why you gotta be careful. Even me, when I brush my hair, you'll never catch me brushing my hair at, at another person's house. No way. No way. It's coming from your head. It's coming from your head. The hair is coming from your body specifically your head and when they take your hair you better just pray to god because they have taken your whole soul that's a piece of your body even your clothing when you sweat when you wear your clothes you wear your shirt and you're sweating it's on your body that has already touched your body it already has your spiritual essence they can take your clothes they can take your underwear they take your shoes in my culture in my culture, where I originally come from, when you, when I'm, when I'm missing a shoe, because you know there's a, shoes coming pairs. I remember one time, I went to someone's house with my flip flops, and I took off my shoes. As I'm about to leave, I only see one flip flop. I'm like, where's the other flip flop? I'm like, where in the world is the other flip flop? I left it there. I went home barefooted. I said, I am not gonna place my foot in the shoes. The soles, the soles of your feet, the bottom of your feet, in the middle, the soles of your feet, wherever you step has power, spiritual power. So when they take your shoes, in my culture, people can take your shoes and do stuff to you through your shoes because your foot has been in it. You've been stepping everywhere in it. And if they do something to your shoes and you put it on, these things have, you know, it may not make sense to you depending on where you're from, but this stuff is real, you guys. When I tell y'all I went back home barefooted, 
And later on, they called me. They were like, oh, we found the other pair of your shoes. I said, you can keep it. You wear it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with taking, with taking precaution. Even your nails. When I clip my nails, oh boy, let me tell you, I wrap it up in tissue and everything. Even your nails. And, and this is... This is where it's unfair because the majority of the masses don't know much about dark spirituality. So for people who practice practice dark, dark forms of spirituality, they have an advantage because it's hidden. Not too many people know about it. So they can target the innocent. They target people who don't have knowledge of dark spirituality and they get away with it. So what I'm seeing here, what I'm seeing here is as a last resort, because I feel like this intercessor definitely protected this person's, uh, um, not just in physical form, but in spirit form, in spiritual form. Their prayer as an intercessor protected this person's spirit. So what this Queen of Swords did was, let me give them something to drink then. When they consume it, boom. This is someone who now only has power through through what this person consumes. They don't have power through this person's, um, they don't have power over this person's spirit anymore. It's through what they consume. This person, this queen of swords, definitely gives offering of food, drinks. This queen of swords is a nine of wands, very, very defensive. Nine of wands is a wounded warrior. Defensive, paranoid, because they feel like they've ran, they feel like they've lost power. They feel like they've lost power over this individual because they know that this individual has an intercessor. They're very paranoid. They're also, what I'm seeing here, they're also very fearful that one day the drinks, the food, it's not gonna work anymore on this person. It's like they're saying to themselves, what if it doesn't work anymore? What if it stops working? <laughs> Someone's getting exposed today. Clarify the Four of Swords. Nine of Swords. Yeah. This person is frantic this queen of swords is really scared this this queen of swords i feel contemplates a lot because they feel like they're losing power this queen of swords feels like they're losing power and i'm pretty sure this queen of swords has immense hatred for this intercessor here because she knows that this intercessor is far more powerful than she is the nine of swords having sleepless nights being in distress having haunting thoughts king of cups this is someone who's very king of cups can be very unstable i know the king of cups you know this is someone who's very sensitive very sensitive this is someone who carries very strong feelings and emotions but i feel like this queen of swords is the king of cups this is someone who is easily triggered and when they become triggered that's when the crazy comes out This person carries the energy of the Nine of Swords. This Queen of Swords carries the energy of the Nine of Swords. This is this could very much be a young air sign. Doesn't have to be though. But they're very impulsive. Nine of Swords is impulsive. Nine of Swords is a, a quick action action taker. They move very, very quickly. The Five of Swords is here. Five of Swords is defeat. It is a lack of success. I don't feel like this Queen of Swords is going to be victorious because the Five of Swords is defeat. It's when a plan backfires and the Two of Cups. Two of Cups represents a partnership. Clarify the Two of Cups. <laughs> Queen of Wands. 
yeah I knew it this is someone who has a queen of they carry a queen of swords energy and a queen of wands energy yeah queen of pentacles this is who this person is committed to this is the, a woman or a male whoever that this person who wants to go towards their true love or true friend true family they're connected to this this dark witch here ace of swords yes They they want the love to be requited so badly, but you cannot force someone to love you. This is this is not real love. This is not real love. You're forcing, you're manipulating someone to do something out of their free will. That's not love. It's lust. Greed, jealousy, infatuation, and obsession. It is not love. It's selfishness. more yeah it's not love queen of cups in the reverse queen of cups in the reverse is very emotionally manipulative emotionally abusive uh queen of cups in the reverse is jealous clingy overbearing just told you that's not love and the queen of cups came out very very emotionally manipulative and secretive on the back of the deck the high priestess very strategic very cunning and very secretive the high priestess is also very spiritual sun healing enlightenment illumination clarify the sun the wheel of fortune it is a karmic wheel What goes around comes back around. Clarify the sun. Like there's going to be a positive change i feel like there's a shift a positive shift that's happening in this situation there's a positive shift mm -hmm. knight of pentacles um page of swords communication from a distance it's a big spying card it's a big social media card nine of cups is fulfillment satisfaction i feel like someone's going to be confident nine of cups is very confident with their work so i feel like there's going to be someone's going to confidently message another person they're going to head towards their true love their true friend their true family as a knight of pentacles Knight of Pentacles, um, Knight of Pentacles is a very slow moving energy. It's someone who encountered delays. And this person surely did encounter delays. They were 
and they are still being manipulated. But the heart wants what it wants. And, you know, if you believe that this is this message is for you, if you're the one who's been under the manipulation, you need deliverance. Because even if you go to your true love, you may, you're under something. You, there's not going to be any stability. You, you carry the energy of the Knight of Wands very flighty. Even if you go to your true love, you may wake up a couple days later and go right back to this Queen of Swords, Queen of Wands. Because there's this dark attachment there. I know that there are many powerful men of God, women of God, pastors, priests, apostles, evangelists, missionaries who are gifted in deliverance. They have the gift of delivery. When they lay hands on you to pray on you, let me tell you, whatever that evil spirit is, it's fleeing from you. Because of the power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you are, you the viewer, if you're the intercessor, when your person tries to reconnect with you, you need to immediately take them to someone to get delivered. To a trusted person, a trusted man or woman of God. who is gifted in deliverance. Who can pray on this person and release them of this stronghold on their life. This strong spiritual hold. If not, the relationship will be unstable. You saw it when they came out to Knight of Wands. Knight of Wands is flighty, in and out. They come in to get what they want, then they leave. Because this dark influence is still on them. They're trying their best to fight it by coming forward. But this is a spiritual war, it's not physical. So if this Queen of Swords, Queen of Wands still has spiritual access to them, they may leave you again. They may do something again, do something, you know, hurtful again. There will be communication, Page of Pentacles. They're coming to you. Page, that's another communication card. They're coming to give you something that they could have breadcrumbed you because of the delays that they encountered. This could be an apology, a last minute apology, a last minute love offer, an explanation, but I feel like it's, it, it's, it's long awaited. The star, your wish is going to be fulfilled. The star, your prayers have been heard. They are coming back. But it doesn't just stop there. Some very powerful, light, spiritual work needs to be done. Not dark spiritual work, light spiritual work. Because that is where God resides, in the light. You will not find him in the dark. You've been manifesting. The star card is all about manifestations coming to life. You're this three of cups here. 
you're the other person who's been interceding. Some of you could be the one who is under this manipulation. And I and if that's the case, I beg of you to please spiritually protect yourself. Be consistent in your prayers and med and meditations. Especially before you go to sleep. I told you things occur in the spirit realm, then they take place in the physical realm. You got to do your prayers before you go to sleep. Hangman. The hangman, it's all about letting go, releasing, surrendering, and the emperor. Three of Wands. Three of Wands is when you miss someone, missing someone, waiting for your ships to sail in. You may have had to let this person go. This person could carry an emperor energy. You may have had to let them go for a little bit, but now they're coming back. You may have had to really release this person, surrender, surrender it, surrender this case to the divine. You know, now they're coming back long awaited right many of you you've been waiting for this person your job is not to fight their battles your job is to lead them to the light when they're ready and there's a reason why they're coming towards you because they're being led this person's being spiritually led towards you that's why through the manipulation and all they're still looking at you because you're their light in darkness. This may be someone who will not stop spying on you. They won't stop watching you. They're fascinated by you. They won't leave you alone. And I know it's it's irritating, it's toxic, but it's really, there's something spiritual going on here where they're in darkness and you're the light. When you're in, in a dark room, picture yourself in a dark room and you see a pitch of light, aren't you gonna follow it? You're gonna walk towards that light. That's how this person sees this. They're in darkness, you're their light. That's why they're so attracted to you, but you also need to protect yourself. Darkness is always attracted to light. That's why, that's why when you are a light being, you will attract all sorts of darkness. You will attract the covens, the cults, the secret societies, low vibrational people, toxic people, dark spirited people. They're all looking at your light. And you have to protect yourself because many may come to you wanting help but some may come to you because they want to destroy your light. They want to put out your light and turn you just as dark as them. So you have got to let people, let people fight their battles, but help them through intercessory, interceding on their behalf spiritually through prayers. And through the Most High, they will naturally come towards you for help. But you cannot be putting yourself in risky situations. You can't be out here fighting other people's battles and sacrificing yourself. No. I told someone the other day, I was like, you don't have to sacrifice yourself. None of us have to sacrifice ourselves. Jesus already did that. But many of us who are healers and deliverers, we're called to be of light, to lead people towards the light. To heal and enlighten people. We're not called to put ourselves in dangerous situations. You 
you know, and even when that time, if that time ever comes, God will always give you specific instructions on how to go about things. An intercessor, an intercessor does not lead themselves. They are obedient. They are obedient towards God's words. They pray for people and then they hear what God wants them to do. And many times all you need to do is just pray and he's going to handle the rest. You had to let go of this person. Now they're coming back. Now they're ready. Many of you, maybe you wanted to help this person so badly in the past, but they were not ready to change. You know? They're coming. Yeah. Justice. They're ready for justice to be served. They're ready to get out of darkness and deception. They're ready to stop settling for, for something less than what they deserve. Justice will be served. It's already being served. Justice, it's all about balance and fairness being restored. Look, Ten of Cups. This happily ever after. This unconditional love. Ten of Cups is even a family, a happily, a happy family life. Perhaps that's what the two of you were destined to have, whether platonically or romantically. But it will happen. The two of you will get this Ten of Cups, whether this is the two of you coming together and having a family or, or the two of you being long, long time friends. The Ten of Cups will happen. Justice will be served. You just have to do your part as an intercessor, pray for them, send them, send them love and light, and give their case to the Most High. I'm going to end the reading. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was a very long but thorough and complete reading. And I hope that it gave you some really good details, some really good knowledge not just about your connection with this person, but also about spiritual warfare. All right. So thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed this reading, please like, comment, subscribe to support my channel. Um, if you're interested in connecting with me more, please check out the description box. I have links to my website, links to some of my recommended psychic advisors. I have links to do a prayer submission. I have links to make a donation. Um, everything's in the description box. All right, you guys. Please, please, please stay consistent in your prayers, your meditation. Be safe, be blessed, take care.